But now it's time for me to scoot on down to the other end of the couch. So, Ryan, you can take my place on the hot cushion. So today uh -oh. I'm, I'm going to discuss your fantasy football footprint and follow that up with some questions. Please keep in mind, I'm going to be very direct, to the point, and brutally honest, and the questions are not necessarily going to be easy. Is that okay? Uh, we'll give it a shot. All right. Before we get into the feet of this potato, I'd like to ask just a few things about you. What subpage of MyFantasyLeague.com do you use that most people do not? Oh, that's that's a good question. Um, I think as wow, I, I don't know if I don't know if a lot of people use this one or not, but um, I'm in way too many leagues. So when I'm just trying to track a certain player uh, using that, um, I, I think they call it yeah, status in all my leagues. So that's that's the uh, the page I use quite a bit. Basically, um, you can find out if a player is a free agent in across all of your leagues or if, if he's on your roster on another team's roster or, or, you know, whatever the status might be. So that's one I use quite a bit, especially around waiver time. That's one I don't think I've used very often. So writing that one down. Okay. Whereabouts do you live in this world? I live just outside Louisville, Kentucky. Nice, man. We've had several from the Kentucky area here this year. This has been wonderful. I went to college at, at Dayton and had a bunch of friends that were from Louisville and I learned how to say Louisville. While yeah. I in college. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a native of St. Louis, so I always said Louisville. Uh, and then to piss them off, I would say St. Louisville. And then they, <laughs> they told me how to say Louisville. Now I say it correctly. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we take offense at Louisville necessarily. That that's fine. Uh, Louisville would the St. Louisville oh, maybe no. not so it was, much. There was always a saint in front. St. Louisville, oh, well that, just yeah, to really even, agitate people. Yeah, that's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan. Obviously, you've been playing fantasy football a long time. Have you ever redone a trade because you felt bad about it after you had completed it? Like maybe you you really were trying to to send something out and it didn't quite work out. Like you really screwed the guy over and you didn't really mean for that to happen and you just out of regret. Swap that thing back. Yeah. So as I mentioned, I am uh, a commissioner of a bunch of leagues. So I, I don't know that I've ever redone a trade like that, but I've gotten trade offers where uh, I I basically countered by adding even more on my side. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have I have done that, which is which is pretty close, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, I mean, it, it's an amazing part of it. You know, sometimes we we make these trades. Uh, Jeremy traded with uh, the left Bauer, as we call him, with John Bauer. And uh, now John Bauer is a proud owner of KSV. And I'm pretty sure, like, Ryan or Jeremy's got about half of the roster that uh, the Bauer had before. So, you know, it's unfortunate. Just, I don't just think Nick, he would trade back, though. Just Nick Chubb. <laughs> Not straight up, but a little Justin Herbert in there, but I'm... I'm happy. It was a pretty good play at this point. All right, so I'm a beer guy, but I do dabble in whiskey from time to time. What is your favorite fermentable used in the sour mash? Yeah, so I'm I'm not much of a drinker actually. I'm, uh, no, no. Um, I mean, I'll I'll uh, try something new every once in a while, but uh, for the most part, uh, cherry coke is is as hard as I go. There you go. Well, we all have our poison of choice. So. Yes. <laughs> My final intro question. What is your favorite thing about fantasy WWE wrestling? Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I have it. I don't know if I have a favorite, actually. <laughs> Maybe you can teach me about that one. That's a new one. I didn't even look it up before I asked that question. Points per pin escape. Ooh, nice. Points per pin escape. Yeah, you definitely want that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it is time for my hard-hitting analysis and drama-laden questions. Are you ready? Let's do it. Question number one. The Dynasty Blueprint is a podcast that I have followed for years. I really like what Matt Williamson has to say, and the other guy is great too. Recent changes have made for migration in additions of other talented people I already listened to in Marcus Mosier and Kate Majuk. If the quarterback for the Denver Broncos were to do a podcast about himself... On your new network, it would be called Locked on Lock. Who is the co-host of Locked on Cowboys with Marcus Mosier? Oh, my gosh. 
This is the hot seat. I have no idea. <laughs> that is Landon McCool at McCool BCB. So oh. as, a, as a Cowboys fan, I've listened to Marcus Mosier for quite some time. So that's uh, pretty exciting for me to have that voice that I've followed on other podcasts merging. My world's coming together. It's wonderful. <laughs> Sorry, Landon. I should should have known that. <laughs> So I, I actually don't have a I don't have a favorite NFL team. I didn't grow up as an NFL fan. Um, I, I kind of think that's helped me in some way as a dynasty player. Uh, but as far as listening to those team specific podcasts, I don't think I've listened to a single one. No offense, Marcus or or anyone else. <laughs> I, I will say that not having a team is, I mean, has been beneficial for me as well. So the Stan Kroenke and the uh, St. Louis Rams broke my heart, but uh, I think it's really helped me kind of be detached and and try and be aware of those biases. Because if I had, you know, the St. Louis Rams to still root for, I'd totally be biased to, you know, Gurley if he was still there and whoever else they drafted. It's a product of it, you know, or you get the other way like me, you're a Cowboys fan for so long that you just never end up with a Cowboys player. But yeah. I say that, but I got a lot of Dak because he was so cheap a couple of years ago. You know, you get him anywhere. But uh, yeah, well, <laughs> question number two, Ryan, you are a co-owner of Dynasty League Football or DLF. This is an amazing site and content source for all things Dynasty Fantasy Football. The rankings are very comprehensive and the trade analyzer tool is very helpful for getting confirmation during a trade. It has recently been improved even more with Jeremy producing quality articles on a consistent basis. Unfortunately, it was then worsened by allowing Jeremy to do rankings because they are nothing but wide receivers. When coding a website, HTML and JavaScript are popular languages. In what year was the programming language Fortran created? Uh, these are fun. Uh, Fortran, yeah, uh, no idea, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I've never even heard of that. You, you got a, you probably only got about a hundred relative years, maybe even six or yeah, seventy. Let's, let's just throw one out there. Yeah, uh, two thousand ten. Okay, Fortran was a language they taught me when I was in college, and it was okay. already a so dead 2017? language. Two thousand seventeen. So it was no nineteen fifty four would be when Fortran, well before Al Gore invented the internet. I guess that's why I haven't heard of it then. Okay. <laughs> Okay, question number three. John Bosch hosts many fantasy eliminators for charitable donations and in support of the Scott Fish Bowl. This year I competed in your eliminator and noticed that we took wildly different paths to build our teams. You drafted five defenses while I drafted the only defense I took across all of my eliminators. You took three of the big five rookie running backs while I took three second year running backs. I took four tight ends and four QBs to one of your each. By my math, the positions of QB, RB, WR, TE, and DST will score 32, 27, 28, 26, and 17 points respectively for top 12 finishes. If you were to sum up all the points and average out the expected scores, who did I draft at spot 6.11 in the DLF mock June number four? Um, I think that was probably Calvin Ridley. That sounds about right. I, you know, I, I think I got a steal here. I got David Johnson at 6.11. Oh. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's a pretty decent player, though, for Not bad. Not yeah, bad. I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, I, I went kind of uh, a little off kilter there, got a quarterback early with Lamar Jackson so it was kind of nice to have somebody like that yeah the the eliminators are a ton of fun though uh thanks for supporting those and I totally switched up my strategy strategy this year we'll see if it pays off uh basically looked at last year's winning teams and found out that uh on average they were carrying um uh, around three defenses so I went heavy on defense, and I think I did five of the five of the eliminator leagues. Went defense heavy on all of those. Um, I, th I think you said I only got one quarterback, so that's not ideal. Two uh, threes, two. You went old. Yeah, yeah, definitely would prefer at least two. It is a super flex format, but uh, yeah, just try to mix it up. Those those are fun leagues that John does. I pretty much went at least four quarterbacks in every league. So after analyzing the scores and seeing just what the difference was between a top six quarterback finish, I just wanted a top six quarterback finish anytime I could get it. So yeah. the more quarterbacks, the better. 
you know, rather than having three defense make my team, I just give me quarterbacks because one QB can, you know, make up for that guy with three points at the end of the uh, the list. Right. Yeah. With, with the defense, it, it just kind of became a, um, a floor play, right? right? Like, you know, they're always getting points. They never um, get injured. Right. They never get injured. So we'll see what happens. I did that in, like I said, I did that in all of those eliminator leagues. So if I, uh, if I totally bomb this year, I'll switch it up again. Like I said, always uh, adjust those, those strategies. Mm-hmm. And Kyle, the, uh, the evaluation of your David Johnson pick will solely be made based on tonight's performance as uh, if there's a game to overreact to that everyone will have opinions on, it will be game one, week one, following a COVID pandemic uh, that, you know, people will make either the nail in the coffin or they'll say David Johnson is all caps back. No, the best thing <laughs> that will ever happen, he'll score three receiving touchdowns and have like a 2.5 yards per carry oh, and like only yeah, get 30 yards on the ground. For 29. Yeah, he'll have something <laughs> terrible. So it'll be a great stat game and people will still be like, oh, no, he's terrible. It'll be <laughs> wonderful. We'll continue this discussion on for years. Uh, okay. Final question. Question number four. Ryan, in your website bio, it reads, here at DLF, Ryan's focus is on identifying, monitoring, and analyzing player value. This is in stark contrast to Jeremy, who is a value agnostic. Despite the differing core philosophies and outlook on the fantasy spectrum, the relationship seems to work itself out in the end. Speaking of sitcoms that ran for eight years in the late 1980s and early 1990s, who was the character Larry Appleton's distant cousin? Oh, that's Balky. That's Balky. Balky Bartakamus. Cousin Larry! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, Phenomenal. Well, tremendous. one is really strong, by the way. Uh, that puts you, I think, in the top five leaderboard of all time. So okay, I'll take it then. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, uh, a DFS tournament when you're just chilling at the bottom, and then like you get a quarterback to wide receiver stack, like 80 yard touchdown plus a defense pick <laughs> six, and it's like you just zoom up. <laughs> like I just did with that one answer. Good, good. I'll take it. A lot of zeros, a lot of half points. Like, you know, honestly, some of them were, were kind of, uh, you know, we're giving them the half point. I mean, it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't as good as it, it could have been. Points. That's, when you get a solid, correct one full point, that's like, put that on your mantle. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. I appreciate your candid and truthful answers and my insightful and hard-hitting analysis.